No food, no land, no freedom. This was life in Russia under Tsar Nicholas II in the year 1905. Bloody Sunday was a tragic event where many lives were lost, but it pushed the people of Russia to stand up to the Tsar and fight for their freedom and rights. At the time, the majority of Russia's population was made up of peasants and serfs. Many of these peasants and serfs were against the Tsar because of the unfair treatment that they received from him, including poor rations, very limited amounts of money, and terrible working conditions. In Russian factories, workers toiled under dangerous circumstances and machinery within many factories often resulted in injuries such as loss of eyes and limbs. Workers were not allowed to own insurance and couldn't protect themselves from these accidents. Also, while Nicholas and his family lived a luxurious life in the Winter Palace, the poor struggled under these awful circumstances. The Tsar's family consisted of four daughters, one son, and his wife, Alexandra. Nicholas II was concerned about his son, who was the only heir to the throne. His son, Alexis, had hemophilia, which made him bleed uncontrollably, endangering his life. Grigory Rasputin, a mystical monk devoted to magical healing, offered to help treat Alexis. He gained the Tsar's trust and was even believed to have bewitched the royal family, influencing their decisions. Because of this, the people of Russia despised him. That is why 150,000 people, led by Father George Gapon, gathered in St. Petersburg to confront Nicholas II about this problem. Their plan was to peacefully march to the Winter Palace and present the Tsar with a petition proposing the people's plea for better living and working conditions. The petition described how the workers felt about their current conditions and how they affected the liberties of them and their families. One problem they expressed was that their employers and higher-ranked officials were denying them their rights to having the freedom to choose what happens within their job and what they were expected to do. They wanted the right to be able to discuss these issues with their employers and come to a mutual resolution. Before the idea of the petition, many workers had been going on strike and even displaying actions of anger and destruction, spreading feelings of revolution throughout the country. Creating the petition and presenting it to Nicholas II would help the workers resolve their problems and achieve their goal of fairness for all. The three main points stated by the petition include measures against the ignorance of the Russian people and against its lack of rights, measures against the poverty of the people, and measures against the oppression of labor by capital. Sadly, the Tsar didn't take the approaching citizens well. When he received news of their approach, he ordered his guards and soldiers to open fire at the oncoming mob. The soldiers killed around 200 protesters and injured 800 more. The leader of the assembly, George Gupon, was a Russian Orthodox priest. Despite all the deaths that day, he managed to survive. Later, he recorded his account of that terrible day. We were not more than 30 yards from the soldiers, being separated from them only by the bridge over the Tarakanovsky Canal, which here marks the border of the city, when suddenly, without any warning and without a moment's delay, was heard the dry crack of many rifle shots. I was informed later on that a bugle was blown, but we could not hear it above the singing, and even if we had heard it, we should not have known what it meant. He then continued into more detail describing the horrors and sorrows of the event. This included a 10-year-old boy getting shot, attempting to get back up, and getting shot again. He also told the crowd to lie down in order to somewhat protect them from the rain of oncoming bullets. 
When the firing had ceased, Gapan looked around and saw the masses of bodies lying around him, showing the devastation of the shooting. Любая революция – это кардинальный переворот в жизни общества, который, как правило, приводит к глубоким экономическим, культурным, политическим изменениям. То есть мы уже можем сказать, что кровавое воскресенье стало следствием революционной ситуации и привело к грандиозным изменениям в стране. Гапон also wrote a short letter to the Tsar the day before the gathering of the workers. It told the Tsar that the assembled crowd was there to describe their needs to him. It also said that Nicholas II shouldn't be afraid of the workers and instead hear out their plea. The people of Russia were horrified by this event and decided to take greater measures to emphasize their cause. After Bloody Sunday, even more workers went on strike and demonstrated throughout the country. Bloody Sunday became one of the initial events that sparked the 1905 revolution in Russia, as it showed the instability of the Tsar and his rule. After its disastrous defeat in the Russo-Japanese War, Russia's social and political instability was undermined. Bloody Sunday was the last straw. More riots and uprisings from the citizens of Russia began to occur, showing the people's hate for the Tsar. Царь очень малодушно себя проявил в этой ситуации. Он испугался и направил ситуацию на самотек. Ведь мы помним, что накануне восстания рабочих и накануне кровавого воскресенья он сбежал в царское село. Strikes in major industries such as railroads sprang up in many cities. To take a stand for themselves, Workers started to form Soviets, such as the St. Petersburg Soviet, which was formed on October 13, 1905. After the revolution's peak in October-November of that year, Nicholas II finally decided to act. He created the October Manifesto, which was a document that said a new constitution would be written and an elective legislature created. This legislature became known as the Duma and some way gave the peasants a say in politics. However, after the 1917 revolution, the Duma was disestablished. The violence of Bloody Sunday and the lack of rights for workers ended up starting a revolution. Through demonstrations, protests, and attempted petitions and documents, the poor and working class of Russia eventually dethroned Nicholas II and received more rights and freedom. На этот ответ, на, на этот вопрос нет однозначного ответа. Историки считают по-разному. Конечно же, в советский период советская историография описывала Николая II как главного виновника этого события. Despite the deaths and tragedy witnessed on Bloody Sunday, the workers eventually triumphed over the Tsar, achieving their ultimate goal. Overall, the event was both a triumph and a tragedy.